Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton. This is Vin Mesolillo, chairman of the board of the Narragansett Bay Commission. Big news on Friday, you picked up a federal a loan for 268 plus million dollars. Right, yeah. uh, you don't get one of those every day. Uh, not every day. Not every day. And it saves over the course of this next phase of the CSO project about a hundred million dollars in financing costs. Uh, over the course of the loan, yes. Yeah. Be over uh, million dollars. That dramatically changes the financial viability and affordability of this project. Oh, it does dramatically. Uh, so and if you don't mind, I yeah, talk, talk a little bit about um, the loan itself. So uh, this is the largest uh, loan in the history of the EPA in the New England region. As a matter of fact, the Narragansett Bay Commission was the only agency in New England to actually receive this loan. Uh, it was a very competitive process. Uh, as a matter of fact, there were only 39 such loans provided over the course of the entire country. Uh, you had to be invited to apply uh, because of Narragansett Bay Commission's uh, premier record of uh, financial management and, and environmental attainment. Uh, we were invited to uh, apply and uh, of course, as you know, we received the loan for $270 million. But it's not only the low interest rate that uh, that is going to be accompany the loan. It's the terms of right. the loan. Uh, the terms of the loan and, uh, and the repayment of the loan are extremely attractive. Uh, the benefit to which is going to be to realize for our ratepayers about $100 million in savings uh, in rates uh, over, the, over the term of the loan. We're then extremely excited. This money goes towards financing the next phase of what's called the CSO, Combined Sewer Overflow mm -hmm. Project. That's that is correct. Continue to improve the water quality of Narragansett Bay. This next phase, let just give a little historical background. Phase one was about 350 70 million. million. 70 million. Phase two, 200 two 270 million. million. And now we've got phase three, about $800 million. Yeah, so we continue to refine the number. Uh, right now, today, uh, as we project cost, uh, using today's cost, uh, we find ourselves at approximately between $749 million and $779 million. But uh, there are always ancillary costs that are associated with a project of this magnitude, as you could imagine. So we, 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 we targeted uh, the $800 million range as uh, something that we would expect, taking into consideration inflation and uh, present value uh, for this project. This grant, what was the key to getting it? I mean, it, obviously you guys have had a, a strong track record, both in environmental achievement as well as financial management. What was the key? Well, you know, it's interesting you should ask me that question today because uh, earlier today we had a board meeting and uh, at, at our board meeting we, were, uh, we received uh, the auditor's report. We, uh, we, we do a report as other state agencies do annually. Uh, and that conversation between the board and uh, the auditors, uh, we were told, of course, that this is 13 straight years uh, that we have received an absolute clean opinion, not a single auditor's note to any of our uh, audit documents. So it, it's, it's, it's that kind of uh, historical performance uh, that enables the, the, the regulators to take a look at agencies that can manage a loan of $270 million. Right. So it's not only the, the uh, environmental performance, the treatment performance, but it's also the financial performance and how you can demonstrate your ability to manage a loan of that magnitude. Um, as you move forward, talk a little bit about the timeline of phase three CSO. Yeah, so uh, right now, uh, right now we are in design, uh, in design and we are now, um, assembling uh, requests for uh, qualifications uh, for design build teams. Uh, we're expected to receive those sometime in January. Uh, we will make a decision on the design build team that we're going to work with and uh, hopefully make a selection in the June, July area uh, if all goes well. Uh, construction would begin once uh, we make that selection uh, we're thinking in the November, December, 
shovel in the ground uh, commencement of the project, which would be the shaft. So that's in 2020, December of 2020. Correct. Looking at really breaking correct, ground correct. on this project. Correct. And it's a five-year effort. Yeah. So you know we have several segments of this project, as you know. So the first thing we would be constructing is a shaft. Then we would, we would be doing the tunnel, and that's going to be about a 40-foot diameter tunnel. The shaft is going to be have a diameter of about 80 feet, so we'll construct right. And it's uh, uh, I don't think we've come to a final conclusion, but the shaft will be about 255 feet below the surface of the ground. So uh, we'll go down 255 feet. We'll drill 2.2 miles, uh, and that process should take about five years. And then once that is complete. Uh, then we'll begin the process of the build-out for the pumps and all the mechanicals that go into the shaft. So this is about a seven-year project. Uh, a remarkable feat of engineering. I mean, it, this it is, is just it not, is. Your, it is. not your normal subway tunnel. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's now becoming commonplace technology. Uh, it wasn't commonplace technology. It was used, but wasn't commonplace uh, when, we, when we started phase one. Uh, but now it is across the country. It's a it's a it's a technology which is commonly used. But, but it, it's pretty interesting because you mentioned phase one and phase two, uh, combined cost of about seven hundred million dollars. Uh, both those projects, phase one and phase two, were both uh, designed and built on time and on budget. Uh, this project of about eight hundred million dollars, we have every every uh, expectation. Uh, and we feel it is our obligation that uh, this thing will be built on time and on budget. A $1.5 billion project, the largest single project in the history of the state of Rhode Island. And, uh, and we're very proud of it. You know, the, the ramifications from a environmental quality standpoint, and we were talking in the green room about the transformation of, you know, if you went to the Seekonk River, the Providence River, 25, 30 years ago, it was trash, dirty, filthy, really no visible mm -hmm. uh, uh, life, uh, life in, in, in any right. way, fish or, or uh, uh, in, in any birds, any ducks, anything going on. And now you see it, it's thriving, it's exploding. In the northern part of the state, the implications down the bay have been just remarkably significant. Dramatic. Dramatic. So uh, last week, we had the press conference uh, to announce that we had received this uh, low interest loan, $270 million. And we had a lot of guests from across the state and, uh, and out of state. And the uh, regional administrator for EPA Region 1 was there, uh, Dennis Diesel. And we, we held this press conference on the grounds of the Buckland Point Wastewater Treatment Facility in East Providence. And I have been there many times. But this particular time, as I arrived, the grounds were manicured. There was not a cigarette butt or a piece of paper on the ground. The grounds at a wastewater treatment facility <laughs> were simply magnificent. I, I had to compliment, I had to compliment uh, our staff and employees at Buckland Point for the way they maintained our facility. Uh, we're, we're, we additionally, we'll be building an, a $40 million uh, administration building to modernize and, and to make operations more efficient uh, at Buckland Point. But uh, the, the view on the Seekonk Blackstone River was magnificent. Yeah, that's great. And uh, if, if you don't mind, I just want to add that uh, in the plan that we have, uh, Narragansett Bay Commission has taken by eminent domain and by negotiation uh, some additional property, uh, which is just north of the uh, wastewater treatment facility. And uh, at some, someday, uh, I hope you invite me back here, uh, I would like to show some illustrations and renderings of the, of the park and the, and the uh, common space and open space that we, are, that we intend to, uh, to uh, prepare for uh, all of the, uh, our district uh, areas, uh, recreational area, so they can enjoy the Seekonk River. Um, talk a little bit, I know uh, part of moving the agency forward and building on the legacy of, of, of financial stability is diversifying 
revenue structures. And you, you've, you've mentioned uh, the need to really go back to Rhode Island voters and say, hey, listen, we've done, the, the bay's cleaner than it's been in 150 years. Uh, we need some additional help. And we also need to make it a little fair for who's picking up most of the That's tab. That's correct. Um, talk a little bit about the potential of in 2020 or in 2022 going out for a bond issue uh, for some, some additional yeah, funding. So, so for a number of years, uh, we have approached the General Assembly uh, to request, you know, uh, that, they, that they float a uh, general obligation bond issue before the, the people of the state of Rhode Island. And uh, all the work that's being done uh, for our CSO projects in our service area, that expense is being borne strictly by our service area, which represents some of the poorest communities in the state. But the benefits of those improvements are being realized south of our service area, uh, area in cities and towns that are not part of our service area. The, the benefits that we and provide- your service area, just for, for reference, is functionally portions of Cranston North? We have, uh, I, I don't think we have any significant piece of Cranston, maybe a street or two, yeah. for all intents and purposes, it's not in our service area. But we have Providence, North Providence, and Johnston. Uh, those communities are being serviced by our Fields Point facility in Providence. Then you have Central Falls, Pawtucket, Cumberland, Lincoln, and these parts of East Providence, uh, which are being serviced by our Buckland Point facility. Right. But the benefits that, be, that accrue be, as a result of this project are being realized south right. of Providence into Cranston and, and further south. Uh, and the benefits accrue to the entire state of Rhode Island. And we think it's equitable that, uh, that the citizens of the state of Rhode Island, and we think they would be more than happy to support a bond issue if it were proposed to them to defray some of this cost. And you haven't gone out pays. for a bond issue for, uh, for uh, almost 40 years. I'm sorry? You haven't gone out for a bond issue, statewide bond issue, no, for about 40 years? No, we have not, no. Uh, the first bond issue we went through was when, when the Bay Commission was created, which was a matching grant, and grants were, of course, a thing of the past, but uh, was a matching grant of $110 million, overwhelmingly supported uh, by the people of the state of Rhode Island. Uh, that debt has been since defeased, and, uh, and we're told by uh, General Treasurer Seth Magazina uh, who manage, does debt management on behalf of the state, uh, that the state does have the capacity to incur an additional you know, $50 million dollars And that's debt. the number you'd be looking and for, that's, $50 we, million? We, we, we would, would support, a f well, we would support any amount of money, but we'd like to see uh, them cons the General Assembly consider about a $50 million general obligation. You see, uh, you know, so much of Rhode Island's economy is, is galvanized by tourism and economic development that in one way or another is tied to the quality of the water bodies. I mean, you look at the development that's now going on downtown, the uh, Wexford Project, River House, the new pedestrian bridge, those are all directly tied to the quality of, of, of the water. No one would want to be investing in that if there wasn't some realization of uh, an enjoyable uh, environment in, in the city. There's no question, but not only that, uh, you think about property values along the water right. uh, in communities not in our service area and how those property values have appreciated. Uh, cities and towns not in our service area also get the benefit of that. So Should Taylor Swift be paying a special surcharge down well, at her you, watch, uh, watch Hill Well, if property. she wants to do a couple of performances, we don't need to float a, <laughs> uh, a general obligation <laughs> referendum. Um, uh, exciting times. What, what else do, do, do people need to know? Uh, this is going to be, and it could be a well-timed construction project. It's going to take place maybe right at the time in which there might be an economic downturn. Those hundreds, thousands of jobs, we're hearing numbers anywhere from 800 direct uh, design and construction jobs all the way up to the EPA's using yep. number around 1,700? Yeah, so if we use the, the uh, Environmental Protection Agency's matrix uh, for jobs, uh, they suggested at the press conference uh, that this project will uh, create um, direct and indirect jobs of 1,750. 
Uh, so we're kind of a mini economy in by ourselves. But uh, this is, of course, a project that is federally mandated. Uh, the utility is an absolute necessity. So as far as NBC is concerned, or you, all utilities are concerned, you know, nothing is going to change f for NBC. Uh, however, when we talk about economic downturn, uh, one of the things I think uh, is, is important to note is that you may have heard me say that the uh, Narragansett Bay Commission is becoming energy self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done, so far, three green projects, uh, energy projects, green energy projects. Uh, we're in the process of uh, uh, doing one more, which, uh, which is a methane conversion uh, project. Uh, that, those projects have been so successful that uh, we now have uh, realized that we will have excess energy, and we're hoping to create a program to export that ex ex uh, that uh, uh, extra energy back and, into the grid, and then pass it through the grid for the benefit of our ratepayers. So we're working on a program. We're working in conjunction with the general treasurer on that and National Grid, and we're hoping to develop a program. Uh, uh, in, in uh, 2020 that would allow us to pass on those energy savings credits onto our ratepayers. That's great. Uh, the criteria and qualifications for that being becoming a beneficiary of that will be developed by the General Treasurer's Office. That's great. Uh, Vin Mesalilla, congratulations on thank all you. the success. Yeah, thank you for having uh, me again. I appreciate it very much. Be careful, you know, walking in dark alleys with $268 million <laughs> in your pocket. Well, it's all on uh, my personal account, so <laughs> it's, uh, but I'll manage it well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. Kate Nagel is running live up at the State House. Governor Gina Raimondo is testifying before House Finance on the lottery discussion. We'll see you back tomorrow. Lots of things going on. Thanks for tuning in.